Hello everybody and welcome to Mike's RC Review. I'm Michael and this is my review of my first crawler, the Traxxas TRX4 uh, with the Defender body. This will be the last update for a uh, short while, mainly because I am um, moving on to a different hobby which I will hopefully be able to share with you guys very shortly. But um, until then, uh, this is going to be one of the last videos for a while uh, of the TRX4 as uh, I wanted to obviously show you guys other stuff. But um, in saying that, uh, this is bringing me a lot of joy, a lot of, um, a lot of endless, countless hours of crawling, uh, albeit uh, indoors and a little bit of uh, crawling out in the backyard when the weather permits. Um, I still don't have the heart to actually uh, drive this the way it was intended, which was, uh, which is to climb rocks and get it dirty and bash it. Um, a lot of people on uh, the internet do that already, um, but at the moment it's still a little bit of a uh, garage queen to me, mainly because, well honestly, I've spent a lot of hours getting it to this stage, and a lot of dollars as well, so I just don't have the heart to actually bash it and to um, to uh, do what it was intended to 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 do, which was, uh, as I said, to climb and to get dirty and stuff like that, which I'm sure I will do in the future. So it will not always be a garage queen, but um, for the time being, it will be until obviously I uh, get the nerve and work up the nerve to actually um, to get it to do what it's um, designed to do in the first place. So this review, guys, is just an overview of what has happened since the day that I got this, which um, I'm showing on this on that video there. Um, it seems like so long ago since it was that, uh, which was just a stock Lexan body with a, uh, th that is a Defender obviously, from uh, Traxxas uh, with a stock uh, workings of the Traxxas TRX4. Um, it is. Uh, it seems to be such a long time ago, but um, actually, I count the uh, the weeks. It's only been, I think, three and a half to four weeks since I've actually received this uh, in the mail uh, from an, from eBay, and um, it's uh, it's in. Well, today's version of it is in stark contrast to what that used to be. So a lot of hours have gone into it, as I said, to get it to this stage. Uh, I think if I had to estimate, I would have spent around about say close to around about 59 to 65 hours just getting it to this stage in tinkering with it, uh, toying around with it, uh, upgrading it and all that. Um, where it stands now, uh, this is, as I said, the uh, final update for a while until I um, get the uh, funds uh, and, and the budget to actually go to, go to the next stage, which is the um, undercarriage, uh, which are the full metal bits for the axles, the portals, and also the diffs, and the um, the uh, drive shafts. So there's a while to go yet before that happens because, as I said, I've moved my funds um, to another hobby at present, which um, it's debatable whether I can put that on YouTube or not, especially um, where I live because um, it's not a hobby that... Um, that is taken uh, lightly where I live, this next hobby I've gone into. But um, I will uh, obviously have a look at the laws and regulations as to whether or not I can post uh, or make videos of the next hobby. Um, so we'll see. And um, if I can't, then I will obviously continue on with this one on YouTube and also my planes. So uh, this update, guys, is basically to... Uh, as an overview, as, as I said before, but it's also to go over the latest uh, upgrades that I've put in here, which uh, apart from all the uh, cosmetic bling that I've um, th that I've put in, um, the new upgrades are the um, servos. So the servos for the, uh, specifically for the um, uh, transmission and the diff locks, which are those things there and that thing there. So you can basically say, I think, from standpoint, from where I stand right now, this has nothing at all uh, uh, to do with Traxxas anymore with regards to electronics. Uh, the only thing that remains to be Traxxas is, of course, the body, um, the roll cage, the chassis, and also the portals and the axles. Uh, everything electronic has been changed now, um, for better and for worse, I guess, in some cases. For worse, because there's no more warranty on this thing. Um, it has been modified to the hilt. 
Um, however, uh, I can say this as well, um, all that I have taken out uh, are the electronics. Now the electronics are still in one piece, they've never been used, they are brand new. So if anything here breaks, I can always revert back to the original Traxxas um, electronics and um, I can use that to actually run this. And the other thing I can do is actually use those electronics to make another crawler because I've basically got almost everything. So if I purchased, for, for instance, a uh, TRX4 Sport, um, I can actually build up a TRX4 Sport and um, have it um, basically with all the electronics that came out of this from standard. So that's another thing that uh, we can have a look at doing. Uh, I'm actually a little, I'm great. Look, the TRX4 Sport has grown on me. Uh, the pickup body is something that uh, I never thought would grow in me, uh, but it has. And there's also a lot of things you can do to a TRX Sport, a sport um, which look, you can put different bodies on it. And if I was to do that, I guess I would put a different body on it uh, anyway, um, as a second body, which um, I would probably think of putting the Raptor, the Ford Raptor body on it. So uh, for this video, I will be going through uh, how this does work uh, how, and how easily everything fit together. In fact, the only difficult, uh, difficult parts of this build or this assembly would be the window grills uh, for the front windows um, and I've gone through that on the uh, previous video that I uh, posted before this one. Um, they are an absolute pain to actually um, to install. Yes, they're straightforward, but don't, there are no instructions. That's the first thing. Second to that, there's nobody on YouTube, I think, from Recollection that has actually done these and, and made a video of it. And the other thing is, if you make a mistake, you've got to rip everything apart, which, thank God, I didn't make a mistake on it. I actually got these all done in one go. Um, one mistake that I can see a lot of people making, maybe, would be uh, the folding of these um, these metal flaps. Uh, because when you get this from, uh, from, the, uh, from the packet, these are actually straight. So they're all folded straight. And they do have a specific orientation. And being that it is basically a foldable metal, it's like an alloy uh, material, you fold it once, you cannot refold it again. Okay, because if you fold it once and you do it the wrong way, once you fold it back, um, it will break. It will snap off and you've got to glue it. Um, so that happened to me on this first one because the, the left front is what I installed first. And then I bent these down the wrong way. And because they do have an orientation, as I said before, um, I had to bend them back the right way. Now, for the th for the first three, I bent back the right way. It worked out just fine. Um, they just made it without snapping. But for this one here and that one there, they actually broke off. So if you look carefully, they've been glued back into place there and there. Still super glue residue on that. But um, that's easy to be cleaned off, I guess. Uh, I can do a little bit of Sharpie work there and just paint over it. But... Um, they're things that you have to watch out for when you're actually putting these um, window grills in. Uh, as I said before, I don't know exactly what they are called, but uh, I just call them window door grills, and I think uh, that gives you guys a detailed explanation on what they are. Um, so they are a pain to fit. Uh, all these other ones were fairly straightforward. This is another painful thing to fit because you've got to both stick them on with the 3M tape that it comes with, but you've got to align that 3M tape because it's not actually stuck onto this to begin with. You've got to stick the 3M tape on to this part and then align it and then put it back to put, uh, sorry, put it down to the actual wax sand body. But you also have to get that perfectly right because that grill there is a separate item that you have to separately purchase. Um, and if you're going to put this on, I suggest purchasing that and that at the same time, because once you put this in, there's hardly any chance of you getting it back off to put this in afterwards. So if you're going to purchase this, uh, checker plate, diamond, uh, plate, um, uh, bonnet or hood protector or hood ornament, whatever you want to call it. If you're going to purchase that, spend the money and purchase this as well. They're not that expensive, um, uh, because they go on as one piece, uh, but the thing is, not many people will know that, and hobby shops won't advise you of that either. Okay, so that's how it looks like from stock. They're just stickers. You take the stickers off, and then you put these ones on. But these these grills do go underneath, so they go underneath the actual um, diamond plating um, metal bits. So that's the other painful thing. And the other thing is, you've got to drill these um, drill these in. Okay, so if you've got you've got to drill these for the screws, and then there's also a retaining screw, retaining bolt underneath. So you've got to think about that. So they were a painful thing to actually put on, and they did um, 
consume a little bit of time, uh, around about four hours for me to complete this properly. Um, if you look closely, I did make a little bit of, mis uh, of a mistake. I had to actually rip this off a little bit because um, this uh, grill mesh thing here actually misaligned. And to realign it, I had to lift up the stuck on, the already stuck on um, uh, uh, checker plate, checker plate uh, item there. So it, there's a few things that you've got to take into consideration when you're putting those in. It's just common sense, I guess. But uh, I do feel that a lot of people will make mistakes on this, on first time builders. Um, and it's it's basically just a scale item. It has no absolute purpose whatsoever. Um, it stays on there. It either looks good to people's eyes or it doesn't look good. But for me, it looks good. And I guess that's all that's important because it's me that own this, owns this thing. So the other thing that um, I've put on here is the antenna. Now from stock, this antenna, if you notice from my previous video, had that swirly, that curly thing here. And it was around about that tall. Uh, it was basically, I think, um, a mobile phone antenna from the 1990s, as I said. But to get it to this uh, to this stage here, I had to basically cut off the curly bit. If you look at my previous video, if you watch my previous video, you'd see that. You'd see what this used to look like. Um, but it's a Yar Racing antenna, guys, if, if you're uh, wondering what it is. Uh, it has no purpose whatsoever. It's there to mimic a uh, radio antenna or a CB antenna. Um, but CB antennas in reality, the one-to-one -one scale, do not look like the R Racing antenna with a swirly thing. Because uh, if they're going to mimic that, it's basically a mobile phone antenna, in which case it's the wrong scale size. Because the uh, mobile phone antennas usually get stuck on to the windscreen or to the back window. Um, so that's not what they they intended when they made these parts. They, intend, they intended them to be mounted either on the uh, bumper or on the rear bumper bar there. Okay. Um, but it was the wrong scale in size, for instance, for, first of all. Uh, and the other thing was uh, real CB antennas don't have the, that, you know, spring type uh, curly thing that they had here. So I had to cut both ends. So I had to cut the um, spring type thing off and then rejoin it. Um, but it was actually a lot easier than uh, what I thought it would be because I didn't have to rejo rejoin it. So this part here is just from the top bit. So you just cut the spring bit off completely. And then all you have to do is use this part the base of the antenna and then just put it back in and super glue it back into place. Um, now this spring here I had left over from one of my plane builds and if you look at a real, for instance, a uh, GME antenna, um, a GME radio antenna in real life, they do have like a spring. Um, so when they do get hit by a tree or whatever when you're uh, driving, it actually springs uh, instead of just snapping off. So, I, so to mimic the real thing, I actually just stuck on a spring there and super glued it into place. So it looks more like a real antenna now. It looks good. Um, so from where I stand, it looks like it's meant to be there and it does look scale. Okay, now on to the next bit, which are the mechanical side of things, as I said. So I'll take the body off now so I can show you guys exactly how this looks like. So because the... Um, the wire for the um, lights are connected. I'm gonna have to disconnect them first. Okay, so that's done. Now the body is a little bit harder to put on now and because it's painted on the top, you just have to watch uh, when you put the clips in that you don't scratch, the that I don't scratch the actual um, um, paint work that I've done to it. So. Now, in this one here, we turn the transmitter on first. Okay, and then the switch for the Z-Run Hobby Wing 550. Silly me, it's not connected. Give me a second, guys, I will connect this in. Now I use two different types of batteries on this, guys. I, I run a 2S uh, 2200 Gen Zace LiPo when I wanna drive at scale. And when I wanna do a little bit of bashing and a little bit of fast driving, I uh, run the 3S 2200 LiPo that I've got from my um, X-Cub or my plane uh, onboard electric starter, which actually fits perfectly into this. Okay, so we're there, Let's press the button. Now, 
The beauty about changing the uh, servos to the um, PowerHD uh, high voltage servos is, as I said on the previous video, I can now utilize the full power of the 25 kilogram um, steering servo. Uh, not full power, because the full power on this is actually 8 volts, but I can now utilize 7.4 volts instead of just 6. So my steering rate is a little bit quicker and it's also a little bit more powerful because previous to this it was running 23 kilograms or 22 kilograms it's now running at 25 kilograms uh, at present so i think the only difference from 7.4 to, to 8 volt is it just runs a little bit quicker and i think one more kilo up so um now the other thing is as i said i can actually use these now and run these on 7.4 on this one on 7.4, which means my little servos are now running on 7.4 as well. So if you can have a look at these, when I trigger the um, diff locks, they're all done, they're all uh, working properly now. Um, and then you've got this one here, which is a transmission servo. And I haven't had the issues that I've had with the previous servos that used to be on this, which was the Traxxas servos, uh, which they used to get stuck. Um, halfway, into halfway into operation, they used to actually get stuck. Um, so that hasn't happened since I've put these new servos on, and the truck is working just fine. So, guys, I want to conclude the video here. So I do thank you for joining me on this uh, video. And as I said, I look forward to... Um, doing the next video and showing you guys what the next upgrades will be, which will be the undercarriage. So that will be the springs and also the uh, full body, uh, full underbody transformation of this uh, rig. So everything that you see there will be metal. So for instance, the axles, the uh, drive shafts, and also the uh, springs will be different and also these parts here. So they'll all be um, metal and this part here will be metal as well. So that would probably be the final um, upgrade that I do to, to this truck, and I will leave it at that because, um, as I said, this at the moment it it's already gone way past the budget that I've allocated for it as it sits with the body that it's got there, and also the way that is, uh, I'm already I've blown past three and a half thousand Australian dollars. Uh, that's a lot of money, guys. In US dollars, that would be roughly around about I think eighteen hundred, almost two grand uh, in American. Um, it's a lot of money to spend on a little car. Uh, in fact, if I was to compare it to my planes, my big X Cub set me back around about seven thousand Australian dollars. That's excluding the labour that I put into this. If I was charging for my labour, normally hobby shops here work on a I think eighty dollar per hour uh, rate. Uh, so if you put into the hours, if you put in the hours into uh, into the con uh, if you consider the hours that, you, that I've put into this, it's a fair bit more than than that as well. But of course, it's my rig, so I'm not going to charge myself for, uh, for, for making it or building it. But um, everything I did do myself. Um, I was a little bit intimidated by all the wiring and stuff at, pre at first, but then I thought to myself, man, I've um, put together a, uh, a, uh, an X-Cub from Hangar 9, uh, which was the plane, and I do have those videos on my, um, on my channel. So if you want to watch those, feel free. As I said, this is an RC review channel, so it's anything to do with RC. And I think in future, as I said, my next project will be different to this. It will not be RC at all. Uh, so I'm debating whether to put this on, put that onto this uh, channel or not. Probably not. Uh, but in future, I do plan on um, re, um, reigniting my helicopter hobby. So I used to fly RC helicopters, and I think um, uh, it will be a good thing to put on this. So I'll have... Uh, helicopter, car and plane, and then eventually in the near future boats as well. So it will be a complete RC channel review. Um, and that's what that's what I want this channel to end up as. So the other thing I'm going to be looking at in the future is once I've got the right gear is to do run videos instead of just talking and then an overview and then updating. And obviously that's boring to a lot of people, but some people do do watch the video these videos and I myself watch videos of other people doing what I'm doing now. And that's what I like watching. Uh, in fact, the action videos are second to me because, well, at the end of the day, I'd rather them explain what they've got uh, rather than just showing me. So um, 
the other thing, guys, is you know uh, everybody has their own uh, their own fancy. So at the end of the day, uh, there are people that like these videos. There's people that don't like these videos, and you know it's all to their own. So thank you very much for joining me once again, and I look forward to seeing you in the future uh, Mike's RC review. Thank you so much for those guys that have subscribed to me uh, to, to my channel. I really do appreciate your uh, support and for watching these videos. And if there are any questions, please feel free to message me at any time. I do make it a point to respond to everybody that sends me messages. So until then, guys, um, please keep COVID safe. Uh, keep your distance and also observe all the uh, regulations at present, especially those in Victoria, in Melbourne, Victoria, where I live, uh, where we've gone to stage three lockdowns again. Um, God bless us all. And hopefully this COVID stuff will be um, over very shortly. Till next time, guys. Peace out.